When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 Hey everybody, wolves. Jerry Williams, AK Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we look at numbers uh, 166 and 167 of Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs, The Earth is Not a Spinning Ball. 166. The geostationary communication satellite was first created by Freemason science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke and supposedly became science fact just a decade later. Before this, radio, television, and navigation systems like Loran and DECA were already well established and worked fine using only ground-based technologies. Nowadays, huge fiber optic cables connect to the internet across oceans, gigantic cell towers triangulate GPS signals, and ionospheric propagation allows radio waves to be bounced all without the aid of the science fiction bestseller known as satellites. Now, while Clark did popularize the geostationary communication satellite with a more high profile publication, he did not create the concept itself. Uh, though Dubay's desire to diminish the veracity of satellites by connecting it to a science fiction author, the concept had been around for about 20 plus years before Clark. Again, I'm forced to wonder how any of this is proof the Earth is not a rotating globe. The proof is an attempt to say, uh, one, satellites come from science fiction. Two, we have these other things so they aren't needed. Three, which supposedly means that they don't exist. Four, so those who tell us they do exist are lying. And five, since they are lying about this, they are lying about the shape of the Earth. Do I have that right? And to fake these satellites, I assume they have a system in place to fake satellite signals that just happen to move on paths that correspond to objects on orbital pathways. And these cell towers that make GPS work are all programmed to allow GPS in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but not cell phone traffic because that cell, unless that cell phone traffic is designated as satellite phone, and then it's allowed to connect. Uh, I'm sorry, but satellites exist, and this argument is not proof against the existence of the globe. Number 167. Satellites are allegedly floating around in the thermosphere where temperatures are claimed to be upwards of 4,530 degrees Fahrenheit. The metals used in satellites, however, such as aluminum, gold, and titanium, have melting points of 1,221 or 1,948 and 3,034 degrees respectively, all far lower than they could possibly handle. Now this is a claim that I've seen floating around for a long time and I've never had the opportunity to confront it. Hello. This is a claim on the surface that on the surface uh, seems to make sense, but only because people are ignorant of the science. Ignorance in this case is not meant as an insult, just a factual description of people not having the information. First off, yes. Uh, the thermosphere can reach temperatures up to 4,530 degrees Fahrenheit. But here's where Dubay's understanding starts to melt down, literally. The temperature in this context refers to the kinetic energy of the individual gas molecules, not the ambient temperature you'd feel uh, if you were just chilling up there with the satellites. Here's the key point. The thermosphere is extremely thin, almost a vacuum. This means that while the few particles in this layer can be very high speeds, hence the high temperature, there are so few of these particles that the amount of heat they transfer is incredibly low. Think of it this way. If you put your hand on the metal in a hot oven, you will almost instantly get burned because there are so many molecules densely packed and quickly transferring a lot of energy to your skin. If you just put your hand in the oven without touching the metal, you'll feel the heat because the, the air molecules are transferring energy to your skin, but it will actually take a while before you get burned because the molecules are spread out and encountering uh, your skin less. Uh, 
even though each molecule is at a high temperature. <clears throat> now, if you were in the thermosphere, there'd be so few molecules to hit you, you wouldn't feel that heat. Now, let's talk about the, uh, the metals used in satellites like aluminum, gold, and titanium. Dubé points out their melting points and argues that they should just melt in the face of such temperatures. However, the real world doesn't quite work like that. Due to the low density of particles in the thermosphere, these metals don't actually reach their melting points. Moreover, uh, satellites are designed with this environment in mind. They are built with thermal protection systems that help dissipate any heat that they do absorb. For instance, they use reflective surfaces to reflect solar radiation and radiators to emit the heat they generate internally. It's not like to tossing a block of aluminum into a furnace. Dubé's argument is a classic example of oversimplification, taking a piece of scientific information and applying it out of context to mislead. But hey, unlike most of these proofs, at least this one is based on an actual scientific fact. Don't get used to it. That's my job. That's what I do. No one on this planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.